Hello, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here with us today for another episode of At Home with APS. My name is Mrs. K, and I'm going to be joined today by three other wonderful teachers, Miss Kathy, Miss Lori, and Miss Kraft. We've all worked together to create an ELA lesson for you with a couple of different fun activities. This lesson is geared for second and third grade students, but adults and children of all ages are welcome to join us. If you are with us on Monday, you might remember that our essential question, it's behind me, was where do ideas for inventions come from? On Monday, we talked a little bit about the word inventions. We read a great book about an inventor, and Miss Kraft helped walk us through how we could invent our own writing journals. Today, we're going to dive deeper into the idea of inventions and where they come from, where those ideas for inventions come from. Let me tell you what our plan is. First, we're going to have the word of the day with Mrs. K again. We're going to have some word work with Miss Kathy. She's going to help us with those really tricky multisyllabic words, those words with two or more syllables that are kind of hard to read. She's going to help us break those down. Miss Lori is going to read one of my favorite books. You're really lucky to get to listen to that book with her. And then Miss Kraft is going to have us work on our very first piece of writing together. You're going to get to write an opinion piece. I'm excited to see what you make. Should we get started? Let's go. So if you were with us on Monday, you remember that we started our word of the day with Mrs. K, creating a vocabulary journal. We invented this together. We made this journal. Let me pull this out. We took blank pieces of paper. We folded them in half. And then we made this shape on both sides. The shape is bigger over here. If you made a couple of these pages between Monday and now, you're ready to go. If you didn't make these, no big deal. What I want you to do now is to make that shape, we'll talk about it in a minute, on a half piece of paper so you're ready to write with us. Okay, let's get going. So on Monday, if you remember, we had a very important word of the day. What was that word of the day? Invention. That's right. Do you remember what an invention was? Let's read the definition together. Ooh. A new, useful device or process. That meant a new or useful thing or way of doing something. That was a very important word. But we have a new word today. New day. New word. So let's take this one down. Uh-oh. My invention to hold this up isn't working very well. I'll have to fix that. That kind of reminds me of the book that we're going to read later. Sometimes inventions don't work well the first time. Are you ready for our new word? This word is persistence. That's a big word. Say that word with me. Persistence. This is such an important word. I'm going to try to hang it up with just one clip. We'll see how that works. Oh, it did work. Whew. Now, remember, last time I told you that in order to learn new words and to store them in a way our brain can find them later and use them, we need to say that word over and over and over. We're going to say persistence three different times, but we're also going to get our body moving because I know, and I bet you probably know, that movement and exercise help us learn and help us make those connections with neurons, which helps us think and problem solve. So we're going to do a little bit of movement. We're going to break persistent down into its syllables. Per Persistent. How many syllables? Three. 
We're going to hop when we say each of those syllables. And then we're going to say the word all together. That was a lot of instructions. You watch me do it. Ready? Per sis tent. Persistent. You got it? Let's do it together. Two more times. Per sis tent. Persistent. This time. Can you do it fast? Ready? Persistent. Persistent. Nice job. Ooh, got my blood moving, some extra oxygen. I'm ready to learn some more. Do you know what persistent means? You might have heard this word before. Persistence means continuing to do something despite challenges or failures. In other words, persistence is when we keep doing something that's difficult or hard, even if we maybe messed up the first time. I bet a lot of you show persistence every day. You strike me as hardworking and persistent kids. OK, now we're going to use this fancy shape to show what we know about the word persistence. Do you remember what we called this yesterday? We called this a Freyer model. Remember, a Freyer model is a visual representation to show what we know. In this case, we're going to show what we know about this vocabulary word. I have my writing utensil. I'm going to use a marker so you can see, but you can use whatever you have at home. A pencil, a pen, a crayon, doesn't matter. OK, let's get going. What do I put here in the middle? That's right. We put our vocabulary word of the day. What was our vocabulary word of the day? Persistence. I'm going to write that in mine while you write it in yours. I'm going to check back to make sure I don't make a spelling mistake. Excellent. Persistence. Now, do you remember what we put in the top left-hand corner of our Freyer's model? That's right, our definition. Let's say the definition together again. Continuing to do something despite challenges or failures. You write while I write. Awesome. Now, it doesn't really matter what order we fill these boxes out in, so we're going to do it in a different order than we did on Monday. Do you remember what goes down here in this bottom left? Oh, no. Surprise. That's OK. I'll put it up here. Sometimes our inventions don't work so well. But we can try to fix that later. Do you remember what goes here in this bottom left-hand corner? What's that word? Big word that began with the S. A synonym for this word. Or another word that has a similar meaning. Hmm. Can you think of another word that has a similar meaning as continuing to do something despite challenges or failures? If you have one, say it out loud. Oh, I bet you came up with some good ones. Here's one I have in my brain. Perseverance. Have you heard that word before? It sounds similar. It starts with the same beginning sound. And it also means continuing to do something despite challenges or failures. I'm going to write my first synonym here. You write while I write.
Hmm. Per sir veer rents. All right. Now I have a challenge for you. Later today, I want you to come up with another synonym for persistence. Remember, you could use something called a thesaurus to look it up. Maybe you could ask an adult to help you look it up online. Or maybe you could call a friend or a family member on the phone and say, hey, do you know a synonym for persistence? OK, we're almost done. Do you remember what goes in this top box of our Freer's model? Our creative sentence, exactly. I want you, right now, to say out loud a creative sentence using the word persistence. Go ahead, say it out loud. Awesome. I'm going to tell you mine. Let's see. I showed persistence on my science project. It was a lot of work. You write your sentence while I write mine. Maybe even you came up with more than one sentence. Awesome. Now this last box is something you're going to do on your own later. Do you remember what we do here? This is where we draw an illustration. You're going to be an illustrator, just like in some of those really good books that you read at home or at school. I want you to draw a picture that illustrates the creative sentence you wrote about persistence. I can't wait to see what you do. Well, that's it. that's it for word work of the day. No, vocabulary word of the day with Mrs. K. But before I go, I have two more challenges for you. First, you're going to come up with your synonym and draw your picture. But the next two challenges are even more important. I want you to listen for this word, persistence. While you're listening to the other teachers that are working with you today, or maybe while you're watching TV at home, or maybe reading a book of your own. Be on the lookout for that word. And last, the most important challenge, I want you to look for times during the day when you show persistence, or maybe when a family member shows persistence. And I want you to tell them when you notice that about them. I bet it'll make them feel good if they notice that you notice that they're working really hard. Next up, we have word work with Miss Kathy. Can't wait to see what she has for us. Hello, readers, and welcome back to Word Work with Miss Kathy. Last time I saw you was on Monday. And if you're new, that's great. I'm going to help you catch up in just a moment. When we're here on, two, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays working on word work, we're thinking about words and how we can break them down into easier pieces to make us strong readers that also helps us make, make us strong writers, too. So last time, we took the word invention and we broke it down into smaller pieces. And that was our word of the day on Monday. Today, our new word of the day is persistence. And you just saw Miss K break that word down into its syllables. And there were three syllables in persistence. Now, when we talk about syllables, usually what we mean is it's a more complicated word. As words have more syllables, they're bigger, harder for us to attack when we read. When we think way too long ago to kindergarten and first grade, we were working with words that only had one syllable, usually cat. That's a smaller word. So when we're talking about words with more syllables, we're talking about larger, more complex words. And you can feel your brain grow as a reader as you take on larger and bigger words. And I'm about to show you a pretty big word. And I don't want you to be scared, because we can attack it together using some of our skills. 
So our word, written right up here, starts with M. And when we were work looking at words on Monday, we were thinking, are there any parts of this word that are easy for me to read? And I was thinking about my second grade friends who are learning about money. And I see the word cent hiding in there at the end. Do you see it too? Cent, C-E-N-T. That's a piece of this word that is super easy. I'm gonna underline it. When we start looking at words and we start looking for pieces that we already know, it makes us feel more confident as a reader. I want you to look at the first three letters of this word. M-A-G. Can you sound that out? M -a -g. M-A-G. I'm going to underline that because that sounds like something I've heard before. Mag. I see mag, and then I see four letters in the middle, and then I see cent at the end. Hmm. I also see n i f, n i f together. I'm going to underline that. And so I have mag, nif, and then I have the letter i. Do you remember what sound the letter i makes? I. That's right. So, so far we have mag, nif, i, cent. Magnificent. This is a really big, hard word that's going to be super important later. But I want you to remember that the skills you have as a reader can help you attack really big words, and you already know how to do that. You just need to put those skills together. So that's our word, magnificent. That was a big word, friends. Good job. I'm going to put that over to the side. Because we're also going to be looking at words that are smaller today. And we're going to be adding letters to them to make them longer words. And all of these words have at least two syllables. The next word I have for you is, can you read it? Do you see anything up here in this word that you've seen before? I see E and X together. X. And then I see A and M. I see those letters together a lot when I'm reading. And they make the sound am. X, Sam. And then I see three letters at the end, which can be tricky. It's good to remember that our vowels can have different sounds. We have our short vowel and our long vowel sounds. So we have exam, hmm, i, eh, n. Mm. But then e sometimes tells our letters that they need to sound different. But we want to think what makes sense. Have I heard this word before? Examine. Have you heard that word before? Examine. I have. That's a word that makes sense. So here I have examine as my next word. I'm going to add a letter to this word. And I want you to think, has this word changed? I added an S to the end. Examines. Examines. So adding letters to our words, I can examine something. And if someone's doing it right now, um, examines. My next word is very special because it's in a book we're going to be reading with Miss Lori in a moment. Um, and you may have heard it before, you may have not. I'm going to hold it up for a moment, and I'm going to let you try attacking it. Hmm. And i got to tell you, this time, I don't see many parts to words that I've seen before. The ending, E-L, O, I know that. I'm going to underline that. And then I have, P, A, M, O, Pommel. Have you heard that word before? If you haven't, don't worry, because today when you read our story, you can think, what does that word mean as you read it with Miss Lori? And then I'm going to add an S to it. So we had pummel, and now we have pummels. All right, friends. I have a couple other words I really want us to focus on, because they're going to be in our story today. 
And you definitely have heard this word before, friends. Because I know your teachers admire you. Did you get it? Admire. I see add. And then I see not a short vowel sound, but long. Admire. My I sound is not I this time. Admire. But watch how I change our word. I admire how you are persistent when work is hard. I admire how amazing you are when something is very difficult and you don't give up. I am your admirer. Most teachers admi are my admirers for their students. So an admirer is somebody who admires. I'm going to add one other letter to our word today. So I don't just have admire, I have admirers. All teachers are admirers of their students because they work so hard. And so that's a word you're going to see in our story today. Not just admire, but admirers. And just like on Monday when we were talking about inventions, we know people have to invent an invention. It has to be created. They are going to invent when they have a problem. An inventor is somebody who is inventing. So here's my word invent with OR at the end. I am an inventor. And there are many inventors in history, so I'm going to add my S. That's going to make it plural and show that there are many of us. So we have two words that we started off with. We had the word admire and the word invent, and we were able to add a vowel and an R to it uh, to make it a person. And then we added an S to the end to show that there are many of those people out there. There are many admirers of you as a student, and there are many inventors making our world better. So students, today when you're reading with Miss Lori, I want you to be on the lookout for those really fabulous words. Words that are multisyllabic that we don't have to be afraid of. We can look for parts that we do know. We can sound out pieces, and we can think, what makes sense? I've heard many, many words around me from adults and in other stories, and I can use that information when reading a book I've never seen before or when I hear a word that somebody else says. What are the parts? What can I sound out and think? What makes sense? Thank you for coming and joining me for Word Work with Miss Kathy. Next, you're going to see Miss Lori, and she's going to read you this most magnificent book. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, friends and readers. I am so glad to be here with you today. My name is Miss Lori, and I get the pleasure of reading this fabulous book to you, The Most Magnificent Thing. But before we start the book, I want us to do some thinking ahead and think about what do readers do when they read a book. So today we're going to be thinking about how a story plays out. We're going to think about what is going to happen at the beginning of the story, then what happens in the middle of the story, and then finally, what happens at the end? How does the story resolve itself? So while I read this book to you, I want you to be thinking about what is happening at the beginning, then when does it change to the middle, how does that change, what happens there, and then how does the story finish. Along with that, we are going to be focusing on the words that Miss Kathy shared with us just a minute ago, and also I want you to think about how does this story show persistence, or does it? I don't know, we'll have to see as we read it. So first I want us to think about finding the word magnificent. When is it in the story and how is it being used? Then I also want us to think about the word assistant. That's gonna come up pretty early on. And what does the word assistant mean in the context of this story? We are also going to be finding the word examines. So what is somebody going to be examining? That's the question. 
and admire and admirers. And how are these two words used differently in this story? And then this is probably my favorite word other than magnificent, because I just love the way that word sounds, but pummels. What does that word mean and how is it used in the story? So while we're thinking about all of these things, I really want you to enjoy what I'm about to read and share with you. So this book is one of my favorite books. And as the teachers and I were talking about this, this is actually one of their favorite books too. So it is really special that I get to share this with you today. So this book is called The Magnificent, the, oops, sorry, The Most Magnificent Thing. And it is written and illustrated by Ashley Spires. And the publisher of this book is Kids Can Press. Ooh, I can't wait to see what happens. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, and they relax. She makes things, and he unmakes things. One day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. Can't wait to find out what that might be. She knows just how it will look. She knows how it will work. All she has to do is make it. And she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. First, she hires an assistant. Now, next, they gather their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way and they get to work. I think our pages are sticking together. There we go. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she's finished, she steps back and admires her work. She walks around one side her assistant examines the other side. It doesn't look right. Her assistant picks up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They are shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. It's all wrong. The girl tosses it to the side and gives it another go. Hmm. When she says she gives it another go, I wonder what she means. Hmm. We'll have to turn and see what happens and see what that means. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she's finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong. She decides to try again. <clears throat> the girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands and examines and stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens. She fixes and straightens and studies. She tries different ways to make it better. 
And we can see from the pictures all the different ways that she tries to make it better. She makes it square. She makes it round. She gives it legs. She adds an antenna. She makes it fuzzy. She makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small, even one smells of stinky cheese. But none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers, but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing that is in her mind. She gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams pieces together. She pummels the little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work and her brain is too full of not the right things. If only the thing would just work. I don't, I'm kind of curious to see what happens next. Crunch! The pain starts in her finger and then moves to her brain and she explodes. It was not her finest moment. Here she is. I'm not good at this. I quit. Her, her assistant suggested a walk. It's not much help at first. She's walking. But before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad gets pushed out of her head. As they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then she notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong things that are really quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the will to seat ratio of the next. There are sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she e reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the magnificent thing. She gets to work. She works carefully and slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure there are no distractions. This gentleman says, this would be the perfect thing to ward off bears. This lady says, this will stop the leak. And our friend here says, this one's all wet. The afternoon fades into evening. Finally, she finishes. She alerts her assistant. The pair take a good long look. It leans a little bit to the left. 
and it's a bit heavier than expected. The color could use a, bur a bit of work too, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. What a wonderful book and story this was. So now that we've finished it, I just have a couple of questions that I think we need to think about or ponder as we read the story. So the first thing after I read the story myself the first time, I thought, what would, what would I do if I was in the same situation as this girl? Would I make the same choice in the same way? So let's think about that for a little bit. I'm not sure if I would make the same choice or not, but I think the choice she made turned out really well because she was able to realize her most magnificent thing. The other question I had after I read this was, what was this story really about? Think about that for a minute. I had a couple thoughts about this. I thought, well, was it really about how you make an invention? Is it kind of a guide to what it takes to be able to take something from inside your head and then build it and put it out into the world? Perhaps. Or was it also a story that showed our word? Everybody recognize this word? This is our word for today, persistence. Think about how did our girl and her assistant show persistence through this story. And the last thing that I want to have us think about is what did happen at the beginning of the story? How did it change and go into the middle? And then finally, what happened in the end? I think at the beginning, she had a great idea. And she had it inside her head. And she wanted to bring it outside into the world. In the middle, it got a little messy. And it got a little frustrating, I think. She even got a little angry, which ended up being OK. And she was very lucky to have her assistant that suggested that they take a walk, because that helped a lot. Then in the end, she found that all that messy stuff that happened in the middle actually helped her to realize how to make and bring her magnificent thing into the world. So what a wonderful story. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. Now, we are very fortunate that we are going to have Ms. Kraft come up and do our writing lesson with that, me. So thank you for listening to our story today. Hello class and thank you for joining. I'm Mrs. Kraft and we are going to talk about a writing project that I have for you today. So you've had the opportunity to talk about some vocabulary words, to listen to the word of the day, and to read an amazing story about inventions. So let's remind ourselves again that we have an essential question that we are working on. And our essential question is, where do ideas for inventions come from? So keep that in your mind as we work through our writing project today. What I'd like you to do now is pull out your writing journal if you've created one. Remember, writing journals can be anything you want to create. So if you have a composition book at home, that's perfect. If you don't have that and you have some construction paper, go ahead and create a writing journal like I did. I just put some paper inside and we're good to go. If you don't have that, don't worry. You can also create one with cardboard like I did. 
So go ahead and create one. You could glue some pictures on the front and then put some paper inside. So that's easy. So once you have, and if you don't have any of those things and you just have a piece of paper, great. Go ahead and grab your paper and we can write on that today. Make sure you have a piece of paper and a pencil before we begin. Okay, I want to talk about inventions. And I want you to think about your idea of the greatest invention ever. So this could be something that is very important to you that you can't live without. Or maybe you could live without it, but it's still really important to you. So keep those, that your mind going. And let's talk about some inventions. We use inventions all the time, right? So let's go way back in time to the caveman. When we had our cave family and they were thirsty, how did they get a drink of water? Well, they would go down to the river or the water source and scoop up some water in their hand and take a drink. Have you ever tried that? It's really hard to take that water with you, right? So, somebody came up with an idea. They came up with a container to hold that water. And then that evolved and more inventions happened and somebody came up with the idea of a vessel, a cup to put it in. And then we can carry that with us, right? So we can stay hydrated. So make sure you're drinking lots of water and staying hydrated with your cups of water. But this is an invention, so you use this every day. Let's talk about another invention that we all use all the time, and that would be a spoon and a fork. So let's step back in time again to those cave people, and they probably ate with their hands, right? They probably ate berries and meat, but they had to eat it with their hands. That's not always very sanitary. So somebody invented a spoon and a fork. Wow, now we can eat soup, right, with our spoon. And we can grab our meals with our fork without touching them. And of course we have a knife, but maybe your grown-up should be using that for you. So these are inventions that you use every single day. Let's talk about some more inventions. One of the most important inventions was, for me, is probably my cell phone, okay? But let's talk about that, boys and girls. When I was a child, guess what? We had one phone in our house, and it sat in my kitchen. So in order to call anybody, I had to go down and sit in my kitchen chair, pick up my phone, and dial my friends. I couldn't go anywhere because there was a cord to the phone and a cord to the wall. But I could still call my friends, just like we can with our phones today. Then, and as I got older, there was a new invention. It was a cordless phone, so I didn't have to sit at my kitchen table. I could walk around my house. I couldn't leave my house, or I wouldn't hear the person, but I could still be fairly mobile around my house. And now, look, it's somebody invented the cell phone. So we can go outside our house, we can get in our car and drive and still talk to people. So that is an amazing invention. You may have a cell phone, or maybe a grown-up by you has one, but many, many people have cell phones now. Another invention that's really amazing is what you're watching me on right now. Most of you are looking at a TV. So let's go back a little bit in time to when the TV began. It was black and white, fairly small, black and white. And look at somebody invented another TV that was color. And then another TV that was a flat screen. So we have all of these inventions that happened after the first invention. They kept making them better, much like in our story that we read. Are you thinking about your invention and what you think is the greatest one yet? All right, 
Let me give you a few more ideas, and then we're going to work on our graphic organizer. What about your Xbox? That's an invention, right? We don't need it, but it sure makes life fun. What about a lawnmower? Keeps our yards neat. What about a bicycle? You have a bicycle? I love to ride my bicycle. And then from there, somebody put a motor on it and created the, the automobile or the car, right? That's something I would have a hard time living without. So let's get started and talk about our graphic organizer. I would like you to draw this graphic organizer in your writing journal. So I'm going to give you just a minute to draw this top box. And this is where you're going to put your greatest invention. So why don't you, if there's somebody sitting next to you, why don't you turn to them and tell them your idea about what you think is the world's greatest invention. I'm going to share mine with you in just a minute. Okay, great, now that you've shared it, I have chosen the car. And I'm gonna go ahead and write, you would write in your invention, right in that bubble up there, I'm gonna go ahead and put mine there. So my idea is the car is the greatest invention ever. Here's my graphic organizer. My next step is, what's my reason? Why do I think the car is the best invention ever? Well, the car takes me to the grocery store. That's a reason, right? Why do I need to go to the grocery store? Because, believe it or not, I need healthy food to survive. So I'm going to put that as my fact. We need to eat healthy food, so be sure you're eating lots of healthy fruits and vegetables at home while you're there, because we need that to keep our bodies safe and, and healthy, right? What's another thing a car does for me? Well, a car takes me to school, right? That's where my job is, so I have to go to school, but I went to school when I was a kid, too, just like you. Why? What's my fact? Well, I go to school because I have to learn, right? As humans, we have to learn. We have to feed our brains. Just like we're feeding our bodies, we also need to feed our brains with education. That's why we're here today, helping you learn and making you smarter. Now, if you're in second grade and you can come up with two reasons, that's great. You can stop there. Third graders and second graders, if you want to challenge yourself, let's try to think of another reason why you think the car is the greatest invention ever. So mine, my last one is, my car takes me to exercise. Why do I need to exercise? Because I need to keep my body healthy and get some exercise, keep my heart healthy, and I like to exercise, right? So it will take me to the gym. It would take me to the hiking trail so I can go on a hike. And if you can see this picture, it can take me to the river so I can ride in a kayak. Those are great forms of exercise. And I hope when we finish this episode that you get up and maybe take a jog around your house because that's great exercise for you. So here I have, so this, our opinion piece that we're writing today, you have an idea. Now you can choose a different invention, of course, whatever you think, because this is your opinion. What do you think is the greatest invention ever made? Wow, that's a really broad question. So you could pick anything. Could it be a chair? Could it be a table? Hmm, could it be the markers that we're writing with? Or the paper that you're using? Once you have all of your ideas, now you have the whole gist of your paragraph that you're going to write. And it's mostly done for you. So you're going to start out with your topic sentence, right? Topic sentence is the main idea of your paragraph. And then you're going to build that paragraph up. You're going to support it 
with all of these other things. So my topic sentence would be, I think a car is the greatest invention ever. That's my topic. Now I'm going to support it. My car takes me to the grocery store because I need healthy food to survive. That's a sentence that's supporting my topic, right? Now, second. Next, my car takes me to school because I need to learn. That's my next sentence. And finally, my car also takes me to exercise because I need to exercise to stay healthy. So we've supported our topic with these sentences. We're holding it up, right? It's like a table. And your sentences are the legs that are supporting it. Finally, we come to a conclusion. That's a long word, I know. Conclusion. So we are going to conclude our paragraph with a sentence that sums it all up. And that's what I want you to think about, boys and girls. I'm not going to give you a conclusion today, but I want you to use your brains and exercise them and come up with the end of your paragraph, a conclusion sentence. Why don't you turn now to somebody sitting next to you and share one reason and one fact about the invention you've chosen. All right, we've shared with somebody, we have great ideas. That's what writing is all about, right? We want to take those ideas and you want to write them down. If you want to do two paragraphs, that is awesome. Go ahead and write those in your writing journal. I know that when you get back to school, your teachers are going to be very, very happy to have you bring in your writing journals and show them what you've done because you're going to make progress. And your teachers are going to celebrate that once we get back to our classrooms. So, all right. Well, that was wonderful. And I hope you had some wonderful ideas that you generated about the greatest invention. We're going to keep working on this topic. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Remember, boys and girls, if you are needing some paper or you're needing some school supplies, you can get them at the grab-and-go lunches that you will find at many schools around town. So if you've gone to get a lunch, look for them starting this week. They should have paper for you. They should have some pencils, um, maybe some crayons. So tell your grown-up, and they can help you get that, OK? So take a look at our website, aps.edu. And the lunch sites, the grab-and-go lunch sites, will be listed on there. So take a look at that. They will provide you with that yummy, nutritious lunch that you need to keep your body healthy, right? And maybe you can walk to school, but maybe you will need my invention, the car, to take you there. So we'll see. Or maybe you can take a bicycle. All right. Well, I'm so happy that you have joined us. Remember, we will be here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we're going to continue our theme of inventions and our essential question of where do ideas for inventions come from. Remember, those inventions surround us everywhere, every day. So boys and girls, I want to thank you so much for joining us on this episode of At Home with APS. <laughs>